Live from your local election headquarters at the 22 News Broadcast Center, this is a Westfield mayoral forum. And now, here's Rich Tedemer. Good afternoon and welcome to a special Your Local Election Headquarters presentation. I'm Rich Tedemer. All this week, 22 News is hosting a series of forums featuring candidates running for mayor in local cities. Today, it's the candidates running for mayor of Westfield. We're joined in the studio by incumbent mayor Mike McCabe and city councilor Kristen Mello. We start with opening statements. Each candidate will get one minute to make their opening statement, and the order of the opening statements was determined by a drawing before the program. Mayor Mike McCabe, you go first. Well, thank you very much, Rich. I appreciate the opportunity to be here, and thank you, Kristen, for uh, coming along. Um, the, it's been an interesting last 18 months or so uh, serving as your mayor. Uh, we've really tried to make improvements specifically in the areas of roads and parks and people. We've uh, made a consistent uh, push to refurbish uh, lots of areas that really needed to, to, to get done. We've also taken a look at a good hard look at um, what we're going to do for infrastructure in the future in terms of dams, levees, and um, flood related issues. So. Um, Th those are all things that take time to work through. We have been um, consistently trying to get people to work collaboratively together a little bit more um, so that we don't duplicate our efforts. We've asked each uh, one of our departments and their department heads to give us capital budgets, which is the very first time that we've done that in history so that we can kind of figure out what we need to do moving forward um, as, uh, as finances permit. And uh, I'm looking for your vote on November the 7th, and thank you very much for having me. Councilor Kristen Mello, your opening statement, please. Thank you so much for having me, and thank you for joining me here, Mike. Uh, I, my name is Kristen Mello, and I am the director and co-founder of RAFT, Westfield Residents Advocating for Themselves. I, for the last four years, have served my community as a city councilor at large in the Westfield City Council. Uh, primarily because of the PFAS contamination of our community and the effects it has had on our aquifer and on our health. Uh, for the last four years while serving as city councilor, uh, our, our city has not taken the PFAS contamination as seriously as I believe that it needs to be taken. And uh, I pulled papers for both mayor and city council so that the voters of Westfield could send a very strong message to the city, the mayor, the city council, that we need to address our PFAS contamination, we need to address our opioid problem, uh, and we need to work together and start having these difficult conversations. So I ask for two of your votes on November 7th. Thank you so much. All right, candidates, we now move on to our question and answer session. I ask each candidate the same question, and each candidate will then have one minute to respond. There's no time set aside for rebuttal. Let's get to the first question, which by virtue of a drawing, Mayor Mike McCabe will answer first. And Mayor McCabe, Governor Maura Healey says that the state will run out of capacity to house migrant families by the end of the month. Lammers Hall at Westfield State University has been proposed as a possible emergency shelter site for migrant families. Do you think it's a good idea to house migrants on the Westfield State campus? And what should the city do to respond as the number of migrants arriving in our state continues to rise? So I have a minute. Um, Lammers Hall is, is not the ideal location to um, present uh, migrants for uh, a, a new place to, to live. When you're talking about taking 200 or 240 uh, new people into a city and you kind of um, put them in a, uh, an environment that's separated from the things that they would actually need to get in uh, touch with, such as food and health care and, you know, uh, trips to the um, to, to restaurants. Um, Westfield State Campus is located um, two miles from any type of, of restaurant or anything of those lines. I visited Middleborough recently and went to a um, quality in there and noticed that there were no cars there. So while there was a full capacity at the Quality Inn, there was no way for those people to, to access the community and services that they need. I did uh, speak with the governor and the lieutenant governor and gave them an alternate source uh, for a possible housing location, but we'll, we'll see how the rest of that plays out. Councilor Mello, your answer, please. Thank you. Uh, I, Lammers Hall is not ready to take care of people living there. So that is sort of a non-starter anyway. But the situation at Westfield State is such that the state can do what they want with that land, and so we need to be ready. Westfield has uh, an, an awful lot of land, but we do not have um, the, the 
public transportation infrastructure to make sure that people without personal modes of transportation can get everywhere they need to get. And so taking care of that in Westfield would help both migrants that may enter our city and uh, the residents that are already in our city that may have some uh, transportation issues. So making sure that people can get to where they need to get to will help everyone in the situation and help Westfield take over uh, any, any other um, accommodations that we need to make room for. Councilor Mello, you get the next question first. The city of Westfield, as you mentioned, is very large geographically and has many miles of roads to maintain. There are currently multiple construction and paving projects going on in the city. As mayor, what would you do to make sure that these projects move along prompti promptly and ensure safety on the city's roads? Actually, uh, I'll hand it to Mike. He has done an excellent job with the roads uh, in his term. Although I, it would have been more fortunate to not have everything dug up at the same time. <laughs> that can be frustrating for people. Uh, but no, we have, we have done, gotten a lot of infrastructure improvement in terms of our roads in the last two years. Uh, my issue with that is that we haven't uh, produced any assets with these and we haven't found another way to generate the rest of the money we're gonna need to continue this improvement. Uh, so we really do need to get some new growth involved and we need to start uh, taking better care of the infrastructure that we have that protects these roads that we're building, um, particularly the Little River Levee. Mayor McCabe. So there are 251 road miles in the city. Um, when I came into office, we asked for and received funding for something called a um, patient condition, uh, pavement condition index, which would allow us to go through our roads and try to figure out which ones needed to be fixed um, before others. Um, kind of takes the political process out of it a little bit. Um, in, since I've been here, we've done 31 roads. Now, 31 roads is a very significant amount of roads. There's about $12 million, I believe, invested in those roads. Um, again, there's some difficulties with buttoning up the roads all at the same time because Coles Bridge is a mass DOT project. The Western Avenue project is a mass DOT project. So while we can coordinate the local roads, you know, that, that impact um, uh, everybody's lives, we're having a little bit of a tough time coordinating the rest of the roads. Um, but the Little River Levee is, is it, it will be fine shortly. Okay, Mayor McCabe, you get to answer the next question first across the country. In-person retail took a big hit during the pandemic and hasn't completely recovered. Several national retailers have reduced their network of stores, resulting in vacant storefronts. In Westfield, there are several vacancies on shopping plazas along Route 20 on East Main Street. What should Westfield do to encourage these new businesses to these vacant storefronts? Great question. So the the real answer comes from community development and it really takes a, you have to look at really what is going to drive economy. We've really paid a lot of attention in the core downtown area of, uh, between say the, the old post office known as the Tavern and the, the two Great River Bridges um, where we had significantly high vacancy rates but because we've been able to offer some CARES money, some uh, facade money and some uh, community development money, we've been able to seed people to allow them to flourish and grow. And what we're really trying to do is we're trying to find those people who have kind of niche markets, um, you know, not big box sports stuff, but stuff that are specialty items that people will go down specifically to, uh, to, to go buy. Um, we have a, a robust um, area of uh, different foods variety down there. And we, we have a plaza that's going in. So hopefully that will attract business into the downtown quarter. The East Main Street is a little bit more difficult, but. Councilor Mello. Thank you, that's an excellent question. I think that uh, we need to be able to open up our city to uh, have more experience oriented businesses uh, when our, our retail purchasing has sort of gone online and by delivery. I think we also need to open up our community to have more micro businesses available. Uh, something like something more like thorns or an inside market or something where micro businesses uh, could share in the rent because sometimes these commercial spaces the the amount of rent that it takes you just can't with an opening small business uh, make that justification financially and so if we had the ability to take some of these larger parcels uh, and create micro business opportunities for residents i think that would be a much better way uh, to begin to fill these spaces all right how about Chick-fil-A? Oh, <laughs> just an idea. Just an idea. Keep that in mind next time. 
Uh, here's question number four, and Councilor Mello, you get to go first. There are plans to build a new police station in Westfield to replace the aging facility on Washington Street, though not everyone agrees on where to construct the station. What do you think is the ideal location for the new police station, and why do you favor this particular site? Uh, my ideal location for the police station has not been spoken about um, in terms of the public meetings. I do not believe that our, we should be building assets in the floodplain. I think that we should put the police station up where the rest of the emergency dispatch services are since uh, our officers patrol the city and you don't actually need a central location. Uh, I also believe we should make sure that we have public transportation uh, to and from at all hours for people who need it. Mayor McCabe, your answer. So there have been three RFP processes put out, so requests for proposals put out specifically to find the uh, attractive enough land site to house a one-story, two-story, three-story building. One of them came back completely empty. Another one came back with two different spots that were in the heart of the floodplain, so they got ruled out immediately. And then the third one um, left us with the position that we couldn't, by law, purchase the, the piece of property. So we put it out again. When it came back again, we can't tell people what they should apply for or what they can't apply for. They have to be able to be willing to apply for it themselves. So when it came uh, back again, it came back uh, significantly higher than the state law allows us to, to purchase that. So in, a, in the ideal world, you'd want your police department to be centrally located. Obviously, I know a little bit about this given my, my, my background. Um, and the, the Blessed Sacrament Church location is a location that we're looking into. We're also um, looking into um, an area off of South Maple Street. That's kind of fallen out of a little bit of favor um, right now, but um, you don't want things like railroad tracks. You don't want floodwaters. You're trying to, you're trying to do the best you can, but it's dependent on who gives you the RFP. Okay, candidates, we are at the halfway point of today's forum. We're going to take a short break, and after that, we'll have more questions and answers from the candidates running for mayor of Westfield. You're watching a special Your Election Headquarters presentation right here on 22 News. You're watching the Westfield Mayoral Forum. Here's Rich Tedemer. Welcome back. Today, 22 News is hosting a forum among the candidates running for mayor of Westfield, and we're joined by incumbent mayor Mike McCabe and his challenger, city councilor Kristen Mello. We'll continue with our questions for the candidates, and Mayor McCabe gets the first chance to answer this next question. Drinking water has been an issue in Westfield for a number of years. PFAS chemicals believed to have come from firefighting foam once used at Barnes Air National Guard Base contaminated several wells that provided water to the city. 
Since this was first exposed in 2016, the city has taken steps to correct the problem. But do you think more needs to be done to restore confidence among the city residents? It's a great question. So what's been done has been to remediate um, the PFAS in our drinking waters through GAC filtration systems. Um, currently, I drink the water from the tap. Um, it's, it's, not, it's not something that, I, that I'm truly overwhelmingly concerned about. And as we look towards the future, we're trying to figure out what better ways we have to, to remediate that. But right now, um, we just received a, an award for the DPW last, uh, last month for their remediation efforts. So, you know, I'm not a chemist. I don't, I don't know what the best methods are. You know, I know reverse osmosis has, you know, some, some good benefits to it. It also has some negative benefits to it. I know pure, absolute pure water has some benefits to it. It also has some negative benefits to us. So I think we've done a pretty terrific job overall at remediating what we have to deal with and given the uh, legal issues that surround the, the problem itself. Councilor Mello. Um, okay, so the answer to the question is absolutely we need to do more. Uh, I am a chemist. We absolutely need to do more. And um, what I can say is that when the Guardian sampled water from Westfield that was considered non-detect and completely compliant by the city, they found 36 parts per trillion of PFAS in that uh, non-detect water. What I also know is that uh, for many, many years, I suffered pneumonia illnesses recurrently over and over and over again until in 2013 in January, I had an emergency lung surgery to remove an infection from my lung and it saved my life and I have been healing ever since. I did not stop having pneumonias, recurrent pneumonias, several a year until I stopped drinking the water. Councilor Mello, you get the next question first. The mayor of Westfield serves as the chair of the schools as the city school committee. As mayor for the next two years, what would be your priorities for improving the quality of public education for the children of Westfield? I think that our schools and our teachers do the absolute best that they can for our students, but I do not think they have the support that they need for the job they need to do. We have not gone aggressively enough to the state and federal government to get supports for our children who have been poisoned for decades. When people drink PFAS year after year and then generations of people are uh, gestated and you know raised on that breast milk, PFAS crosses the umbilical cord, children are affected. Their behavior is affected. The way they grow up is affected and we are not getting any health supports or educational supports for that. We are a well-known contamination site and we need to step forward and get our schools the support and the money that they need to do the job they've been asked to do. Mayor McCabe. Thanks, Rich. Um, so as the chairman of the school committee, you're, um, you're in an interesting position. You're supposed to safeguard the budget and you're one of seven people who sit along with you and try to make the best policy decisions that you can make. Your, your charge is to stay with policy, stay with budgeting, and hire and fire the superintendent of the schools and hire and fire the, the business manager. That's really where you are with this. So um, our schools in, in greater Westfield are in pretty good shape. Where we do lack some um, really is, is in the sprucing up and the maintenance areas of uh, most of our fields, most of our sporting events, most of anything that you want to take pride in your school with. So we're working to um, kind of redistrict and reorganize the, the way we go about handling the business. The teachers are doing a phenomenal job, as Kristen has indicated, um, and we're not in bad shape at the Westfield Public School System, I can tell you that. Mayor McCabe, you get the next question first. Barnes Air National Guard Base is one of the big economic drivers of the city and the entire area, and the base is set to see the delivery of the new F-35 fighters in 2026. Decisions about the base itself are made on the federal level, but local government does have a role to play. What would you do as mayor to ensure the continued success of Barnes and the local businesses that rely on it? So the F-30, the, the coming of the F-35, the announcement a couple of months ago, um, really kind of solidifies Barnes 104 th for a couple of generations. The platform that it's being used to replace is, uh, I, I believe, the oldest, pl the, the newest plane there is a 1985 model. So, you know, it's 40 years old. 
If you extrapolate that out, the F-35's platform will probably last between 30 and 40 years. As an economic generator, not only does the Barnes um, Airport function there as a regional airport, but the 104th functions there. So there's about a $236 million impact yearly to the region by having the 104th and the regional airport working together. So I can guarantee you that I will continue to keep working to keep that partnership and relationship alive and strong and functioning as best we can. Councilor Mello. Thank you. Uh, so the F-35 decision was not our choice and the fact that uh, they are coming means that we need to be prepared and ready. So uh, the noise mitigation study needs to continue. We need to go work hand in hand with that and make sure that the community members are engaged and completely involved for the whole process. The city council approved the money to make sure that the taxiway and the apron repairs were taken care of. That will help uh, make sure that the F-35s are as safe as they can be. We need to make sure that we take care of stormwater drainage when they do this work. Uh, to help make sure that anything that comes off of those runways does not end up back in the wells. The opportunity that we have here with the 104th and with the remediation that's happening up at the base is that we could begin to make environmental restoration and economic development uh, go hand in hand, and that's where we need to focus. We need to bring that research money here uh, because that research can happen here in Westfield where we have this contamination. Councilor Mello, you get the next question first. Climate change is a global threat, but the impacts of it are felt locally. Flooding and damage from more frequent severe storms are among the risks we face in western Massachusetts. As mayor, what would you do over the next two years to make sure that the city is more resilient to the effects of climate change? I would reinstate the Flood Control Commission as is required by city ordinance. I would reinstate the Flood Control Commission as is required by city ordinance. I would make sure the Little River levee is not just repaired in the 500 foot section we said we would repair, but repaired all the way to the bike trail. The trees that are in the Little River levee under high wind will fall over, ripping the levee apart, putting a lot of downtown expensive assets in direct danger. We do not have flood insurance when the levee is not repaired. We need to fix it. The Armbrook flood control dam and the Powder Mill Brook flood control dams are both in stages of being rehabilitated. The public comment for Powder Mill Dam is out now. I hope everyone you know, sends in a comment for that. Um, flood control is a huge issue for me and has been the whole time. Mayor McCabe. So um, there's good news on all fronts. Um, Armbrook Dam is being slated to be repaired in using ARPA funding. Um, hopefully we get that button down through 2024. Um, the Powder Mill Brook Dam, as Kristen has uh, alluded to, is in public participation. The Little River um, Levee was supposed to have the trees removed last week, but, but for a snafu through, um, there was a, a legal snafu that just held it up. That will start to, to be done um, tomorrow, uh, excuse me, next week. And the uh, multi-use levee path is scheduled to take its final, it's open up its bid on um, November the 7th. So I can assure you that um, almost all of the measures that need to be put in place to um, ensure our public safety from flooding and um, natural disasters are already being worked on, even without the Flood Control Commission. Um, that's been a little bit of a sticky subject, but um, when I came into office, there wasn't a full flood complement of flood commissioners. So here we are. All right, our next topic is affordable housing. Mayor McCabe, you get to answer first. Affordable housing is an issue throughout Massachusetts as home prices and rents have skyrocketed in recent years. And while we have lower home and rent costs here in Western Massachusetts than they do in the Boston area, many people still struggle to pay their rent or their mortgage. Is there anything the city of Westfield can do to help homeowners and renters who are worried about being able to stay in their homes? I'm not so sure that um that's the focus. The focus is really trying to figure out ways to get into affordable housing in terms of um, where pe new people and new arrivals can go in and, um, and, and make the best of living, working, and playing in the city of Westfield. So there are a couple of pieces of property that will uh, hopefully come online shortly that I'm, I'm sure that will go to uh, developers in the downtown core area. We also have about 48% of our city is rural residential. So um, in terms of large 
growth for construction assets and, and building assets. Um, currently, we're not really very well set up to, to kind of handle that. So unless council, uh, the, the city council wants to take a stance on, you know, moving some of these parcels out of rural residential back into uh, a different uh, zone for residential, you know, it's, it's going to be a challenge for us. We had 16,000 residents and only 16 were for sale uh, la this summer. So it's been a difficult challenge for us, but we're up to the task. Councilor Mello. Thank you. Uh, I'm disturbed at the idea that we're only looking to house new people. Um, I would like to make sure that housing is affordable for everybody who's living in the city of Westfield, that people aren't forced out of their homes and that renters aren't forced out of their homes and, and their children's school district. We have several sites in Westfield that could, with state and federal programs, be rehabilitated. We have sites that could be rehabilitated with um, community preservation funds. I don't understand why we're not. I don't understand why we're not willing to talk about the fact that there are people who, who have um, different incomes in Westfield and that they all deserve a safe and healthy place to live and play and have their children go to school. I, I think we need to take the resources that we have, the programs that are available to us and house our residents fairly. Okay, Council Mello, you get the Answer the next question, although we're running out of time, so the answer has to be quick. 15 seconds. Okay. Westfield has a lower rate of violent crime than some other cities in Western Massachusetts, but crime is a concern everywhere. As mayor, what would you do to make sure that city residents feel safe from both violent and property crime? I would make sure that people have the resources they need so they don't need to steal from each other. Mayor McCabe? I would... Uh, we got a new police chief named on Friday, um, and I reserve most of that conversation between myself and the new police chief. But I would hope that, that we would reinstitute community policing in the downtown corridors. Um, it is a vital asset to folks who depend 24 hours a day, seven days a week on things that they cannot afford. So for services they can't afford um, on their local PD to, to figure, help them figure things out. Okay, candidates, thank you very much. That's all the time we have for today's forum. Thank you to Mayor Mike McCabe and City Councilor Kristen Mello for being here today. If you missed any of today's program, it'll be available in its entirety on our website at WWLP.com. Be sure to tune in tomorrow at 1230 when 22 News will host a conversation with Mayor Roxanne Wiedegardner of Greenfield. Election Day is Tuesday, November 7th. I'm Rich Tedemer. Have a good afternoon. See ya.